All right, it's a sampling distribution with P hat. On the sampling distribution with P hat problems, I always ask you, like, if there's a bunch of people, what's the probability that more than this many have that? They could also be like, they're kind of like binomial problems. It's like this, the P hat distribution feeds directly off the binomial, the normal approximation for the binomial. We'll go out into that later on. But right now, let's just look at the question. I'm going to read the question and let's just try to tackle it, okay? And I'm not, I don't have norm CDF because all I have here is a TI-82. I don't, I'm, I'm sorry, so I'm just going to get down to the norm CDF part and then just make an estimate at the end. Um, but just the process is what's important. All right, here's the problem. 80% of people like cheese. Cool. You sample 100, what's probably more than 85 like cheese? Okay. 80% uh, of people like cheese. So the population looks something like this. If I draw, um, uh, I can't draw a histogram of the population because this is categorical data. So I can draw a bar chart, and this is a nice like accumulate. This is like a frequency bar chart. Uh, notice that the people that like cheese, there's 0.80 percent of the people like cheese. 20 percent of the people don't like cheese. So notice the distribution of the population is a bar chart, and the distribution of any of my samples will also be a bar chart. So here's the problem that comes up with the test: be like, okay, 80 percent of the people are like this, you know. Uh, what's the sample? What's, what's your uh, what's the distribution of your sample going to look like? And people mix that up with sampling distribution. The distribution of your sample is going to look something like this. You're going to have you know a, a sample. You're going to have some that like cheese and some that don't. There's going to be about 80 percent of like cheese and about 20 percent don't. And you take another sample. And each of those samples you can calculate a p hat. So suppose maybe only you know 78 percent in this sample. Um, like cheese, and that means that 22% didn't like cheese. And you take another sample, you might find that you know 84% like cheese, and only uh, 16 don't like cheese. Your p hat is 0.84. But notice the distribution of your sample is a bar chart. The population is a bar chart, so you don't you don't have to check and see if the population is normal. It can't be. Okay, there are some conditions we have to meet here, and the conditions for these ones are your sample size is large enough, less than 10% of the population. There's a bunch of condi conditions. I'm going to talk about those in a separate video. Um, this is more mechanics right now, um, but it's mad. Um, so notice, don't say the distribution is going to be normal of the sample, or that the distribution of the population has to be normal. It can't be. It's categorical data. This is another cool thing about the, the central limit theorem, or in statistics, is you can take categorical data and, and Turn it kind of transform it into the normal model. The normal model applies here when you take all of a bunch of samples. So you take another sample, you get another p hat of about point, of maybe a p hat of like 0.81, and another one a p hat, take another sample 0.79, and you get a bunch of p hats. What we find out that happens with large with these samples, sample size 100, we end up taking all these p hats, and they all end up piling up around the true p. The true p in this case is 0.80. And all most of the p hats of samples of size 100 will be near 0.80. All of these p hats from sample after sample after sample after sample, the, the distribution of all those p hats is a sampling distribution. This is a sampling distribution problem for p hats. So let's see what p hat we need. So I know if 80% of the people like cheese, and I sample 100 people, I'm going to stop right there, I can find the sampling distribution for p-hats for samples of size 100 based on that p, that parameter. What is it going to be? Well, i got to figure out how likely is it for me to get this p-hat, 85 out of 100, which is 0.85. I'll write that bigger, 0.85. My question is, how likely to get a p hat of 0.85 or that extreme? So um, let's figure this out. Um, hmm. Well, if the true p is 0.8, I can look at my formula sheet and it gives me some very, very, very useful information. I want to, I want to make a sampling distribution for a bunch of p hats and find out how likely is it for me to get that p hat if the true population proportion was 0.8. So I want to know how likely it is for me to get that on this normal model. Well, where is it? The, 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 the formula sheet tells us this exactly. The, the mean of all my p hats is just the true p. 
And the standard deviation for all my p hats is simply square root p q over n. Nice! Well, I know it said that at point 0.8 and I can calculate the, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, the distribution of a bunch of p hats from a bunch of samples. It would be square root 0 0.8, 0 0.2, all over 100, which is 0 0.04. So I go up here and I go up to 84, 88, Go back to 76, 72, and notice what I get here. I get a nice normalish model. What is this? This is the sampling distribution. If the population, and 80% of the population like cheese, and I take a sample of 100, sometimes those samples exactly 80% will like cheese. Sometimes maybe 83% of my sample will like cheese. Sometimes 82. So I take another sample, maybe 81% like cheese. I take another sample, 76% of that likes cheese. Take another sample, 92% of that sample likes cheese. And I take all those samples, and the percent of the sample that likes cheese are the p hats. Those are, those, those are statistics. So I take all those statistics and I imagine, this is a thought thing, I imagine sampling and sampling and sampling forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And what will all those p-hats, that pile of p-hats, what will it look like? Well, it'll be normal-ish, centered here with a standard deviation of this. So what it's saying is, if I do this calculation, I take all these p-hats, 68, 95, 99.7, 68% of my p-hats will be between 76 and 0.76 and 0.84. 95% of my p-hats will be between 0.72 and 0.88. So it's not likely for me to get a, a p-hat greater than 0.88 or a p-hat greater than 0.90. These are unlikely to happen randomly. Things down here are unlikely to happen randomly. That's like significantly low or significantly high. I'm trying to find how likely is it that more than 85 like cheese. So I'm trying to find what's the likelihood of getting this p hat or greater p hat. 85 out of 100, 0.85 or greater. Well, where is 0.85? Where is that random p hat on this model? Well, on this model, that random p hat is right here. So I'm trying to find the area to the right of this p hat. How do I find the area under a curve? Calculus. No, we use our norm CDF, but we can't use norm CDF. Well, I can't use norm CDF because I've got this calculator, but I can't use norm CDF until I get a z-score. So the probability of having a p hat greater than 0.85, the probability of having a p hat greater than 0.85 is the same thing as the probability of having a z greater than whatever the z-score is for 0.85. So let me calculate the z-score for 0.85. Well, how likely is it to be out here? Here's 0.85. Well, I get the distance and divide by the standard deviation. So, my z-score is 0.85 minus the mean, 0.80, over the standard deviation, 0.04, which is 0 0.85, 0.05 over 0.04, which is 1.25. That's my z, okay? Five-fourths, five-quarters. So it's a probability of a z greater than 1.25. And I'm going to guess, I'm just going to guess, that I know, I know that 50% is above this. I also know that, what is it, 80, 70, what is it, 60, 86, 60, 70, what percent is before this? What is it, 68? 34, 84% is above that, so 84 and 16, I don't know, I'm going to guess about 10%. What I would do here is, I don't know, I'd, I'd, I'd go like this, norm CDF from 1.25 up to 99, whatever I get, it's going to be somewhere, I mean, it's less than 16%, because I know 50% is greater than that, 16% is greater than that, only 2.5%, it's somewhere between 25 and 16 I'm going to guess 10%. There's only a 10% chance that um, 85, more than 85 in your sample like cheese. Okay? So, this could also be solved by using a, uh, something else, but I'm using p-hats for right now. So, notice what we did. Okay? We said, oh, I'm trying to find well, like, how likely is it to get this p-hat. Well, what do I think about? Where are all the p-hats? Here are all the random p-hats. Here are the highest how they would fall. They fall centered at p with a square root, with a standard deviation of root p q over n. So here's all my p-hats. I'm trying to find on this normal model how, li where, how, how likely is to get the 0.85 or greater. Find the z-score, norm CDF, the flow chart. Hopefully that helps you with these types of problems.